Hi guys, welcome back. This video is for my calc class, section 5.5, .5, derivatives of bases other than E. So I have the first two derivative rules at the top here, and if we have the derivative of A to the X, then the derivative winds up being the exact same thing, so the exact same thing, times the natural log of the base. Here's our first example most basic one we have y equals 3 to the x so just following this formula right here I know that y prime is going to be the exact same thing times the natural log of the base and we're done now we always know that the exponent is never just going to be just x it's very rare that we get with something this basic so we have a little bit more complex here when we have the derivative of a to the u we write the exact same thing, and then we take the derivative of the exponent, so that's what du is, the derivative of the exponent, and then the natural log of the base again. All right, so here we have a little bit more complex. Again, though, not, not too difficult. We've got y prime. We write down the exact same thing, so we have 2 to the 3x plus 12, and then we're going to multiply that by the derivative of 3x plus 12, which is just 3 and then times the natural log of the base, so then the natural log of 2. You can leave your answer like this. Sometimes they'll mess around and make sure you remember your exponent rules, your log rules. We can write this as 2 to the 3x plus 12 times the natural log. Remember that a coefficient can go up as an exponent, and you have 2 cubed. So we could also write that as 8. Do you have to do that? No. But if you have a multiple choice that doesn't have this answer but has this answer, you need to know how they got from one to the other. Let's look at a couple other ones here involving the product and quotient rule. Okay, so we have two things that are being multiplied here. So again, recognize that we have a product. So we have two things right here that are being multiplied. So when we talk our way through the product rule, we know the derivative is going to be the first x squared times the derivative of the second. So again, here we're going to write the exact same thing, 4 to the x squared times the derivative of the exponent times the natural log of the base plus the second, 4 to the x squared times the derivative of the first, which is 2x. All right, so trying to clean all this up we're going to wind up with, when we do all this, uh, they usually put the natural log first. You don't have to, but that's kind of like a coefficient. So we're going to have the natural log of 4. Then we have the 2x times the x squared. So that's going to be 2x cubed times 4 to the x squared plus 2x times 4 to the x squared. Nothing wrong with this answer. And something else that they could do, you can take out a common factor. So if we had to, you can take out a 2x, and you could take out a 4 to the x squared. And then what you'd be left with is a natural log of 4. And since we took out a 2x, we have x squared left over here. We took out the 4 to the x squared, so we got a plus, and then 2x, 4 to the x squared is what we took out, so we'd have a 1 right there. So we could have that first answer, or we would have this second answer here. That was a product rule. Okay, so we got to remember that that's a product rule example, because we had two things multiplied. Here, in this one, we're going to have a quotient rule, because we have a quotient here, and things being divided. You now we remember how the quotient rule starts. Okay, that's going to be the bottom times the derivative of the top. So here's our new one here. We have the exact same thing. Derivative of the exponent was 1. So this is actually the first rule. Times the natural log of the base minus the top, 5 to the x, times the derivative of the bottom, 2x, all over the bottom squared, which gives us x to the fourth. Now remember, you're separated by this plus sign right here, or this minus sign, excuse me, this minus sign right here. So you have this set of terms and these set of terms. If you can factor anything out to cancel, you need to do that. So recognizing that we have an x in both sets here, we can factor out an x, and we have 
uh, x, ln of 5, 5 to the x, minus 2 times 5 to the x, all over x to the 4th. And when it's all said and done, we could cancel this x here. And this 4 winds up being a cubed. And that would be your final answer for that. So there's four quick examples of how to find derivatives of bases other than e. So just to review there real quick, it's the exact same thing, derivative of the exponent times the natural log of the base. All right. So the last thing we did in this section is derivatives of common logarithms. Okay. So I have two to match up with our derivative rules right here. So when you have a common log base a of x, it's 1 over x times the natural log of the base. Okay, so that seems easy enough. If I follow this here, I got log base 5 of x. So y prime, I make a fraction, I got 1 over x times the natural log of the base. All right, that's not bad. But we know that we're not just going to be taking the log of x every time. So if I have something bigger than just x, the derivative of that goes in the top for du and the inside goes in the bottom. So take a look at this. I got log base 3 sine x. So y prime, make a fraction. The derivative of the inside goes in the top. So the derivative of sine is cosine. And the bottom goes sine. And then the natural log of the base. So the natural log of 3. So that's no problem writing like that. Again, one of the other things we could do if we were to get really picky on a multiple choice, but I probably wouldn't do this to you, cosine over sine is cotangent of x times 1 over the natural log of 3. So I, I used a, a quotient identity there of cosine over sine. And if you remember your trig, that's cotangent x. So I could write it like that as well. This is more than acceptable right here for this problem. Let's do one more. All right. And you have to remember now that with a problem like this, we got log base 2 of x cubed over 2x squared minus 4. You need to use log properties first. Okay. You need to expand in order to take the derivative. All right. So if I expand this, I should know that my quotient property yields subtraction. So what I should have here is log base 2 of x cubed minus log base 2 of 2x squared minus 4. And I also know that my power property allows that 3 to come down in front. Now, if you didn't do that, it would still simplify in the end. But I'm going to do that first to make it easy. So I'll have 3 log base 2 of x minus log base 2. And again, this is that you're taking the log of the whole thing. So you can't split that up. So that's just 2x squared minus 4. All right, now I, I follow the property here now for my derivatives of common log. So I'm going to peek right back up here again. Okay, so if it's just log base a of x, it's 1 over x log natural log of a. And then the other one's going to be the derivative of the inside over the inside times the natural log of the base. So putting that back, okay, now I know I'm going to have a fraction. That 3 is going to go in the top. And then the inside x and then the natural log of the base minus, make another fraction. I know the derivative of the inside is going to go in the top. So that's going to be a 4x. And then the inside goes in the bottom, 2x squared minus 4 times the natural log of the base, which was 2. And that is your derivative. So there's some quick examples to go with the 5.5 lesson. Hopefully that helps you out. Uh, they're a little different than the ones that are in the notes, but pretty much the same thing. Um, thanks for tuning in. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to the page yet, if you're coming from somewhere else, uh, please do so and leave me a comment below. Thanks.